Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation with z squared and z bar. We have z squared equals z bar plus i. z bar is defined as the complex conjugate of z, which I'm going to define in a little bit, and z squared is just z to the second power, right? And i is our imaginary unit. Hopefully you do know that i is one of the square roots of negative 1, maybe the principal square root, who knows. And it's also defined as the number whose square equals negative 1. That's a better definition because we have a unique value for that. Anyways, so let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem. First of all, this problem can be solved, and this is a homemade problem, by the way. I haven't found this in any book or any website. I kind of thought about it. And I didn't even know, that's the fun part of coming up with a problem idea. You don't even know if there's going to be a solution or if the solution is going to be nice. You'll see the solution, how nice it is when we kind of solve the problem. I say kind of because, anyways, I'll tell you later. But this is the problem. To be able to solve this problem, what is this channel called? A plus BI. Yes, we're going to replace Z with A plus BI. One of the things that I thought about, though, before substituting this was can I multiply both sides by something to solve this problem using a different method right like maybe multiply everything by z let's try it right it would give us z cubed and then z times z bar plus z i now what is z times z bar it's actually the absolute value of z squared and I don't know if this is going to help we can try to absolute value both sides we could say hey this is going to be a real number. Does that mean anything? So on and so forth. Anyways, at least I tried. Is this going to lead to a solution or is there another way to solve it besides replacing Z with A plus BI? If you do know, please let us know. Okay, let's go ahead and do this then. Replace Z with A plus BI. So if you do that, we're going to get A plus BI squared equals... Okay, I, was, I told you that I was going to talk about the complex conjugate of z, right? Okay, if z is equal to a plus bi, z bar is going to be a minus bi, and this is the equation we get. How do we solve this equation, right? Let's go ahead and expand the left-hand side. We get a squared minus 2abi plus b squared i squared, but i squared is negative 1. And then we can kind of write this as 1 minus b as the imaginary part of the right-hand side. And of course, this is the imaginary part here in the middle. So let's go ahead and separate the real and imaginary parts so we can kind of set up equations. And as you should know, we do have this as our real part and this one. So a squared minus b squared is equal to a. The imaginary parts, negative 2ab is equal to 1 minus b. And if you want to negate both sides, obviously you could write this as 2ab equals b minus 1, but that's no big deal. Let's go ahead and do something. If I could use substitution because elimination, I don't think elimination is possible here. But if, you, if I could substitute for one of the variables, that would be good. And I kind of think that Putting these two together would be fine, like bring the b over here and write this as b minus 2ab equals 1, so that I can factor out a b and write this as b times 1 minus 2a equals 1. And then, finally, by dividing both sides, I can write b in terms of a, which is nice, right? Now, this is something that I can substitute here. I can replace b with that, and let's see what happens when I do a squared minus b squared, which is this whole thing squared, is equal to a. Now notice that our equation is in a only. Single variable, this is going to turn into a quartic. Let's see what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and make a common um, denominator, but let's go ahead and square this first. 1 minus 4a plus 4a squared equals a. In other words, we're going to multiply both sides by this. Make sense? So it, it's going to look like this. A squared multiplied by this. 
minus, when we multiply by that, we're going to end up with minus 1. And on the right hand side, we're going to multiply a by the denominator. So instead of making a common denominator, I just multiply both sides by this, and I get that. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and distribute this whole thing. And you could also do the following. Switch these around, put the a over here, and then cross multiply, same idea. Okay? a squared minus 4a cubed plus 4a to the fourth power minus 1 equals a minus 4a squared plus 4a cubed. Awesome. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. This is going to be 4a to the fourth power. And then we have 4a cubed, another 4a cubed with two minus signs, minus 8a cubed. So we've taken care of this. We've taken care of that. And then we have an a squared, and we're going to bring in a positive 4a squared. That's going to make 5a squared. And then finally, we have a minus a and minus 1 equals 0. Awesome. Now, here's one thing that might make this problem a little easier. Uh, multiply both sides by 4. Let me show you what that looks like because it's actually uh, a method that we use to make the polynomial monic. And monic means the leading coefficient is 1. Because when the leading coefficient is 1, it's easier to apply the rational root theorem. Okay, here, here's what it looks like. Multiply both sides by 4. Our goal is to get 2 to the 4th power, which is 16. 16a to the 4th minus 32a cubed plus 20a squared minus 4a minus 4 equals 0. And then we're going to write it as follows. 2a to the 4th power, and then I want to write 2a to the 3rd, which is 8, but I do need uh, an extra 4 there. And then I need to write 2a to the 2nd, which is going to bring 4a squared, so I do need a 5 here. And then 2a requires a, another 2, and finally minus 4. You see what I'm talking about? Replace 2a with something, like how about a b? You're going to get b to the 4th power minus 4b cubed plus 5b squared minus 2b, or not 2b, that comes up again, it wasn't intentional, minus 4 equals 0. Okay, this is a monic polynomial in b, it's quartic. Do you want to use the quartic formula? It wouldn't be super bad, because you have to replace first b with something like c plus 1, and when you plug it in, everywhere, uh, you're going to get rid of the cubic term, it's going to be a depressed quartic. It's going to be very sad and depressed. And then you can solve it. Or you can use some other ideas for solving quartic equations, right? There's a couple different ways to do it. Anyways, that's painful though. But as an alternative, or if it works, you can try the rational root theorem, which means you're going to be looking at the divisors or factors of 4, which is obviously plus minus 1, plus minus 2, and plus minus 4. There's six of them. You're going to test it out, and if one of them works, you are going to be good. But one thing to keep in mind is that b is a real number. Why? Because we're looking for a plus bi, a and b are defined to be real numbers, right? That's what it is. So, they can't be complex. Well, this equation is kind of hard to solve. That's why I used a very special tool to solve it, and that's called... Wolfram Alpha, yes, it's a calculator that's available online. And the real solutions, there's two of them. And if, um, you, if you look at these, these are irrational solutions. There are no rational solutions, first of all. So we couldn't find them through rational root theorem. But there are two real and two complex solutions. So either one is going to work. What is the B value? You need to kind of plug it in and find the B value uh, but they're not going to be very nice. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. And bye-bye.